So no need to completely panic, but there is a little bit of concern I have for the new Mega Chargers connector that we haven't really seen too up close until recently. So thanks to some photos sent by an anonymous source to Tesla Roddy, they gave us an up close look at the Tesla Semi Mega Charger plug, which is not obviously using the same connector as a Tesla connector, but it gives you a good idea of how more chonk this port is, and you're gonna need a different connector with a different layout of pins in order to sustain one megawatt or potentially 1.5 megawatts of charging speed, especially when you're charging up electric semi trucks that are going to have 500 kilowatt hours or 800 kilowatt hours, maybe even more than that, and you want to get on the road quickly, it's going to take a bit more than just your typical Electrify America station. So Tesla partnered way, way back with a company called Char In, which is based in Europe, but they started this organization so that they could agree on one standard for class eight, you know, large pickup trucks and electric vehicles that were going to need a lot more charging power. And they had a presentation recently and they unveiled what they're calling MCS or megawatt charging systems that not just Tesla will use, but everybody. And here's the somewhat concerning thing. The MCS connector they showcased, which has very impressive specs, showcasing over three megawatts of charging speed. So yeah, you thought V3 supercharging was fast with 250 kilowatts and then Electrify America tops that with 350 kilowatts. This is over three 3,000 kilowatts of charging speed and it all sounds great and the port looks cool but this is clearly not the same charge connector that Tesla is currently using on the semi and it'd be one thing if this was just like prototype equipment but Tesla is actually installing mega chargers right now that's what these pictures are from at the Frito-Lays facility in Modesto so this is not exactly you know internal Tesla prototype usage this is an actual customer that wants to buy and use semi trucks and this is the port they're going with. They're actually installing mega chargers with this connection. Now, before you think that Tesla went off and decided to make their own charging standard that was separate from MCS despite joining the Charin organization, there was some schematics drawn up a while back about what the MCS standard would look like, and their version 2 design actually looks spot on to what Tesla actually has with the semis. It's not what this new V3 connector port is, but it has, you know, the two giant DC pins that are more circular and in fact, the version 3 one honestly looks very, very similar to a Tesla connector, just a lot bigger and very thick compared to what Tesla is using on the Frito Lays mega chargers. So the prototypes are technically using something that Charin had worked on and developed, but I don't think this was the agreed upon standard, which absolutely brews a lot of questions in my head. Like, okay, Charin, if the point was to come up with one standard, why did you design one that Tesla is now using on the semi trucks and at the same time unveil a new one and say, well, this is version version three of the connector. Isn't the whole point of this to be a universal standard? Like we don't need to have version four, version five different port designs because that kind of defeats the whole purpose of having an open standard that everybody can use. So best case scenario, I guess this turns out to be just a placeholder, like just a temporary thing so that Tesla can road test the semi trucks and let some of their biggest reservation holders for the semi, you know, experiment with them. Like you put up the mega chargers and you give them a couple trucks, but you're not in fully fledged mass production of the Tesla semi yet. And then once you do enter mass production, that's when you adopt the MCS connector that Char In recently unveiled, the version three connector that's supposed to support over three megawatts of charging speed, which is honestly insane. I think that would even be quite a bit much on a 500 or 800 kilowatt hour battery pack, but it still does make me really nervous to see the Tesla semi using a certain connector and Tesla even installing commercial intended mega chargers that are using this connector. And then at the same time, Charin is like, actually, here's what the MCS port looks like. It's like, okay, guys, please, can we agree on a standard this time? Because we already have the big mess of the Tesla connector versus everybody else. Like, on one hand, you have all of Legacy Auto using CCS and agreeing on a charge port, but then at the same time, you have Tesla using a different charge port, but Tesla is 75% of electric vehicles being sold in the United States. So, which one really should be the agreed upon standard? Is it the one the most comfortable? companies are using or the one that most electric vehicles are using. That's kind of a tricky battle and I've seen people go back and forth.
and forth on that standard. But considering that electric vehicles are the future and we haven't really ramped up production of class eight electric pickup trucks and had larger vehicles that are gonna need faster charging speeds really come out yet. So it's really, really important, I think, that everybody agrees on one standard. And I hope that there's maybe a very easy way for Tesla to retrofit the existing mega chargers, which there probably aren't that many. I mean, we know that there's a few at the Giga Nevada facility, which that's Tesla's own property. I'm sure that can be prototype equipment, but there's also some mega chargers at the Frito Lays facility, and I hope they can switch it to the real MCS port fairly simply that Charin unveiled, because this is not the type of industry we need to have more adapters and complexity like we already have for average consumers. But on the more pessimistic side, you know, Tesla has had a very large influx of demand since unveiling the Tesla Semi, and I know it was probably really exciting and fun to have a whole keynote for it in 2017 and have the next generation Roadster come out the back and everything. It was a really fun event, but basically everything at that event ended up getting delayed and pushed back. The Tesla Semi especially, which they said would start production in 2019, now we're basically just seeing a few prototypes occasionally deliver superchargers in a few places. And it's cool to see them prototyping it, but like Elon and Tesla has said on earnings calls, when you've got so much demand for vehicles that require less batteries and are going to have much thicker profit margins than the semi truck, it really makes no sense to bring this to market right now, other than the fact that it would be cool. I wouldn't complain if they brought it to limited production, you know, maybe just build a few dozen a month. It doesn't have to be a lot, but Elon has said that the semi needs 4680 batteries, and considering Giga Texas has already started using 2170s for long range model wise, it makes me think that the 4680 ramp is not going too smoothly, and even when they do ramp up 4680 batteries more, they're all probably going to go towards the Cybertruck next because that's a higher volume, higher in demand vehicle, and that's going to need a lot of batteries too. The Tesla Semi, frankly, I could see getting delayed further into 2024, 2025, simply because it's going to need a crap ton of batteries, you know, 500 to 800 kilowatt hours, and they just don't have that many 4680s yet. So it's a bummer for sure, but at least this delay and this pushback in the timeline gives Tesla time to adopt the MCS connector and build out the mega charger network further so that once customers do start taking delivery of the Tesla Semi, they'll have a decent charge network to support them. What do you guys think of the leaked pictures of the Tesla Semi connector, comparing them to the actual MCS standard that was unveiled recently? Which one do you think looks better? And do you think the Tesla Semi is going to be delayed as much as I think it is? Or do you think there's a chance of them actually releasing it in 2023? All that good stuff, let me know what you're thinking down below. Thanks to everyone on Patreon supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. So thanks again. Have an excellent rest of your day.